Hello, you're listening to Hello, and I'm Jaswal, and I'm going to be talking about Uku, the Inner Chambers, an anime series. Set during the Edo period in Japan, the 2023 series Uku is an alternate fictional retelling of the country's history where a deadly disease kills over 75% of the male population. Based on a manga series of the same name by Fumi Yoshinaga, the anime is spread over 10 episodes. Called the Red Face Box, the pandemic only affects young boys and men, forcing women to take over male roles in agriculture and trade, eventually turning Japan into a matriarchal nation. While the shogunate, which is the government of Japan's dictator, refuses to adapt to changing times at first, it is also taken over by women in the end, and the Uku is an organized harem of sorts filled with handsome men who serve the shogun. The reversal of traditional gender roles serves as a revetting fictional setup, yet it continues to be steeped in reality. Women are not portrayed as physically stronger just because they are now the dominant gender in the society. If anything, it's way more challenging to be a woman than ever as they now have to take on both the roles of childbearing and earning, although they do have an upper hand in all matters of the state. The first episode starts with a brief origin story of the pox and fast forwards 80 years later when female shoguns have become the norm and the male population has stabilized at 25%. So men are precious commodities and the government-licensed red light district Yoshivara is populated with male prostitutes who women visit for both pleasure and their precious seeds. Only the very rich can afford brooms for themselves, while the shogun has the luxury to choose from hundreds of handsome men who reside within the walls of the Uku. I wanted to see at least one subplot set in Yoshibara, partly due to its depiction in Demon Slayer Entertainment District, but viewers must content themselves with tales unfolding in the Uku only, which is what the story is about after all, so that's okay. Largely faithful to its source material, the anime adaptation only omits a few of the raunchier dialogues due to lack of time, but retains all the other violent and sexual content. The first episode serves as a standalone story, following a samurai's entry into the Uku as a mere page boy and his rise to the ranks of the inner chambers, which consists of the lucky few men who become the shogun's concubines. His journey also gives viewers a glimpse into the hierarchy and politics within the Oku, where a complex system of various rules exists and the men aren't allowed to step out or discuss their lives with outsiders. So while some men might only get to do menial cleaning tasks throughout their lives, others may have a shot at becoming the next shogun's father. From episode 2 onward, the story moves back to the beginning of the red face pox outbreak as the new shogun goes to her library to find out how things were 80 years ago when the breakout began. One of the most powerful characters in the series is the last male shogun's wet nurse, a shrewd woman called Kasuga, who grooms Lemitsu, Japan's first woman shogun. The slow shift of power balance between the genders is masterfully explained through the reign of a young Lemitsu who grows exceedingly fond of one man in the Uku. But despite her powers as the shogun, Lemutsu also carries the burden of being a baby maker responsible for producing the next heir. The characters are designed just like their manga counterparts, but the anime is obviously a lot more colorful and vibrant. And the story is just so interesting that honestly, I couldn't pay too much attention to the animation because I was just trying to keep up with all the little developments that were going on and was completely invested in the tale. From love, lust, power, politics and faith, the anime covers several themes and is a gripping fictional fest. The first 10 episodes of the series only follow Lamatsu's rule, leaving ample scope for further seasons. Be it for adult viewers, it's a fantastic exploration of what history might have been like if women were at the helm of everything. I give it an 8 out of 10. You can stream the series on Netflix. That is all from me. Talk to you in the next one.